Hey everyone, Shane Sands of United in Christ Jesus, and we're on about our fifth take here. So this has really been an interesting ride so far. Look, today it's all about righteousness. How can you be declared justified, righteous before God? And that's the big question that every single Christian needs to firmly get a hold of. I'm not saying that you need to have the doctrine of justification down before you become a believer. But I can guarantee you that as you start your path following Christ, you need to be really rooted and grounded in this doctrine. And for you who aren't a believer, but you're thinking that, you know, I want to find out more. That you need to really wrestle with this doctrine as well. Because it's the one that is going to force you in humility to have to acknowledge that you can't do it. You can't earn your way to heaven. In fact, about eight years ago, the very first track that United in Christ Jesus put out was this track. It's called Two Words, and it's based on the scripture verse right behind me, Romans 5.1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the word justified and peace are the two words on the track. Now, you'll notice at the bottom of my screen here, I have what? Two words, imputed righteousness. And the reason why I'm bringing up justified and peace and imputed righteousness is because there is a, a thought process going out, something being put out by a, a fairly well-known a theologian who says that it is absurd to think that God would take the righteousness of his son Jesus and impute it to a believer, impute it to a person so that they would have right standing before him. And what I'm here to tell you is there's no way that you can stand before God unless he does impute his son's righteousness to you. So it's one of these things that you have to be really, really grounded in. And when you are, it's an anchor for your soul. Now this, the thought about this video came up uh, maybe a couple of months ago when I actually uh, heard the pastor of the church that Holly and I are attending brought this up. And I went after the service. I remember going, did you hear him? He said that. And it's not something that I hear hardly at all. Uh, maybe in eight years I've heard it a couple of times. And that is, if you look at the screen right, be right behind me, you're going to see where I have this chart, and it says guilty, innocent, and righteous. And under guilty, I have all people from birth. And then I have innocent, have not done good or bad. And then righteous, declared by faith in Jesus alone. The pastor was like, you still have to be declared righteous. And he's so right. I mean, when I hear things like that, and let me just side note, if you are in a church where the pastor and the ruling elders and the teaching elders are all teaching sound doctrine, and not only just teaching it, but living it, Humble yourself, get down, thank them, praise God, rejoice in God, thank Him for the grace that's in them, and pray for their protection. It is a gift. So I'm really, really blessed that we are actually at a place that we go, God, thank you for your gift in these people. So the first thing is, is we're all guilty. From birth, since Adam's fall, God imputed the sin of Adam since he was the representative of all mankind to all mankind. And it tells us in Romans that just as death came into the world by sin and, and death spread to all people because all people sinned and it was because of Adam, and then we find out so too about Christ and his faithfulness, his righteousness, his, his, his overcoming. So we're all guilty. There's none righteous, no, not one. None seeks after God. But now, that first part, we have been justified, have been. So as a believer, 
If you have come to faith in Jesus Christ, if you have repented of your sins, it is God who's given you a measure of faith, and that grace through that faith opens your eyes to see the Son. The, the Son reveals the Father. You are you see your sin against holy God. You see your guilt. You understand that you are deserving of wrath. You are deserving of judgment. But in Christ, you ask for forgiveness of sins, and you turn from those sins and start to follow Christ. That is a gift of God. And that means you have been justified. That means you're declared innocent. Now, that's the key thing. And, and you have to pay attention to this process. So that moves you from guilty all the way to the middle which is innocent but that is not the full story we have to be declared righteous and righteous is a life it is actions it's attitude it is actually keeping the law it's actually fulfilling god's law and that's the problem none of us can do it and God, who is holy and just, cannot just say, well, uh, you believe my son, so I'm just going to say that you did do that. That goes against the very character of God. However, when a person trusts in Jesus alone, Scripture tells us that the legal decrees that were outstanding against us because of our sin the wages of sin is death. They were taken from us and they were nailed to the cross. And then something amazing happens after that. He who knew no sin was made to become sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That's the key. The father who sends his son, who is also the holy judge, who judges the living and the dead, takes your guilt, places it on his son, and then takes his righteousness and he credits it to your account. Not because of what you have done, but by the very gift that God gave you, you cling to Christ. And it is in his unfailing love that you hope. It is in his faithfulness. And when you understand that God takes you from innocent to righteous, not on what you have done, but on the basis of you believing of what his son has done and accomplished on the cross and in his resurrection. I'm here to tell you, what a blessing, what a relief, what a peace. The second word, we have peace with God. Hostility is removed. We are adopted children. We are brought into the family. We are His children, and by the Spirit He has given us, we cry out, Abba, Father. We're declared innocent. We are then made righteous on the basis of faith in His Son, and that righteousness is imputed, credited to us, and we have peace. Forevermore we have peace. And you see, friends, that's the key. Because the world, sin, death, Satan, everything that's contrary to holy God will try and always turn it around and make it about you. And yes, Jesus died on the cross, but you're not worthy of it. And you haven't done anything since that. You know what? You haven't lived the perfect life. God dwells in you, but you're still a sinner. And the onslaught will come. But we're told in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 25, Do not be afraid of sudden fear, nor of the onslaught of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and keep your foot from being caught. When you rest in Christ, when it's His unfailing love, when it is He alone whom you cling to, nothing can shake you. You're built upon the rock. You're founded upon the rock the anchor to your soul, and you can go throughout the day. Praise the Lord. So until next time, grace and peace. Bye.